Well, thank you for having me here. Um, first of all, I want to start with a story about me, actually. Um, I'm working for uh, Annexus for four years now. Uh, I've been detached to ELAB for the past three years, uh, and I started my PDN this September, uh, last September, so for half a year I'm now actually working for the University of Twente as well. Um, and all of those years I've been working on future planning, on innovation, on electric vehicles. Um, but actually, if I look at myself, I'm already driving a Renault Zoe full electric car for the past one and a half years. Um, I have bought a quite sustainable home because I believe that we should think about our future and, uh, and how we use the energy. Um, and I'm actually planning on getting PV panels on my home as well so that it's even more sustainable and I can drive on my own sun energy, uh, which I produce during the day. So actually, if you look at those, those things, I'm already living the future we are talking about here. Um, and if you then look at the Tesla Model 3 that is uh, uh, sold way more than we thought that would be sold, um, you can see that this future is probably closer than we think it would be a few years ago. <laughs> um, and if we then look at what is happening in the world today is that we, we see that there is a um, direct, dramatically change in energy uses of households. So not only the electric vehicles is a new development, but as well the electrical heating in houses and the decentral power generation we are facing. And this all will give a new pressure or an extra pressure on the capacity of our low voltage network. To avoid high investment in the grid um, and to avoid possible congestion, but more important, the deterioration of our network quality, uh, we need to start and think about how we use the energy and when we use it. And then one of my colleagues at Nexus uh, has looked at the, what would happen if we would plot 8 million cars on our uh, network of Nexus. And as you can see, all the red spots are the places where we need to replace transformers and increase the uh, capacity of the cables. Um, of course, we are not sure, as Ecoff has already uh, saw, uh, said, when this will happen. But if it happens and we will have 8 million cars, we will have a dramatically pro a big problem in our network. Um, in, of course, this is a really extreme scenario. We, the, the former presentation already stated that probably 4 million cars would be more uh, appropriate, but this is only one of the scenarios where we only have the increase of electric vehicles, not in even the decentral power generation we think are, is coming, and uh, the electrification of all the other home products. Um, so therefore we need, uh, we already know that smart charging is necessary in the, in the few coming years. Um, to uh, pos to uh, to be sure that we can postpone the charging and we can charge at moments that there is free capacity on the network. One of the things that is really important that this is a really local problem. It's a local problem, as you can see in the map, on certain places in the network. It's not everywhere, but this local problem um, um, will give us the. Uh, we need a local solution for that as well, um, and we need to use this capacity of our grid as efficient as possible. And more importantly, our social capital. We've put all together uh, money in this grid. We're not, it's not something that the, the grid is owned by the network companies. It's our own capital we, we, uh, we put into it. Um, and therefore, if we see that the increasing uh, decentral power generation, we need more flexibility uh, from the demand side, so from households as well. And if I define flexibility, I define it by the possibility to increase and decrease load during a certain time frame. But most of our home household products are not really controllable. Because no one wants to sit in the dark at night because you run out of your flexibility program or uh, co uh, contract uh, or um, that there, like, there's not enough electricity at that moment of the day because you're in a peak moment. Um, and luckily, if we look at those household products and we look at research we did, you can see that um, people are willing to give flexibility in their household products, uh, as long as it is well designed and user friendly. But how much can we actually 
um, how much flexibility can we actually get from those household products, which is not really a lot. Because most of those products you want to use at the moment, you want to use them. You don't want to uh, switch your television to another moment of the day. Maybe you can do something with the white goods, like washing machines and dryers. Um, but actually, if you look at what is the biggest uh, potential, it would be either heating or electric vehicles. And if you take all, everything into account and look at the power demand of households, it's nowadays all the home products together, we have a power demand of 1.3 kilowatts versus a 5 kilowatt peak demand of uh, electric vehicles, which is even flexible in time because you don't need to charge immediately when you're home at 6 o'clock. You can just postpone it until maybe somewhere around 10 and then start charging slowly during night when there is a lot of wind energy. But if we want to do this, we need to have flexibility services. At this moment, we only, those are only limited available. To research within an, uh, within an ELAT how these flexibility services will, uh, will uh, how those flexibility services will work, we started a product called FlexPower. And FlexPower, uh, we did a proof of concept, what the capacity profile is or, or how it could be, and we implemented this fairly simple capacity profile um, in which you have uh, less capacity during the peak moments between 5 and 7 in the evening and a lot more capacity for charging uh, during the daytime. Of course, we knew already from the beginning that this profile was not really future-proof and it was not really dynamic because if we look at the, the figures, uh, we're only postponing right now the, the peak, uh, peak demand. But um, the, the, these are uh, the, all the companies who work with us uh, in this Flex Power project. But um, uh, it is important that it is technically possible, possible because we need to do something about this capacity problem. Um, and if we not only want to uh, shift the peak, from the, we need to have preferences from the VE free driver. So we need to know when he wants to charge, how long he's charging and how much load he needs. And at this moment we only have that limited available. And therefore we made a second phase of flex power uh, in which we incorporated the energy producer and the uh, program responsible party as well. Um, in this pro uh, program, or this next phase of the, of the project, we don't have a consultation of the EV driver, but one of my colleagues has made an algorithm in which we can calculate how long uh, uh, an EV driver is charging, what the, uh, so the charging load, how long he's charging, and the home location. And if you look at the home location, it's the location where you charge most, so it could either be at home but or at, the, uh, at your business or wherever, wherever you are uh, charging the most of the time. And out of millions of charging data of EVNet and L, we can calculate um, what is the uh, habit of this EV driver. Uh, and therefore we can change the charging profile and the, uh, without changing the, the behavior of the, of the EV driver. And if we see that there is a possibility to change this Charging profile, we enable char smart charging. So only if we see that there is uh, a possibility without the bothering the EV driver. But, uh, and because we don't want to bother it too much, we only adjust the charging profile by 20%. So it's not a lot, but it's still enough to perform smart charging and to have more capacity. And we assume from this that there's not a problem. So that's actually um, not really taking it. If it's really not a problem, assume that most of the time a driver will never notice that they are smart charging. Um, but everyone knows, or everyone who's driving an electric vehicle, and me myself, I do that, so uh, knows that there are certain situations where you don't want to smart charge, where you see this smart charging sticker on the, on the charging point and you think, oh no, I need to go home. Um, and I had this actually already quite often when I went to the university in Eindhoven. Uh, they have uh, some kind of smart charging uh, on the charging spot. Uh, and when I uh, go to my, uh, uh, one of my lectures, I only have one and a half hours, and then I need to go home to my work again. But unfortunately, uh, if I do that at Eindhoven, my, char my car is not fully charged and I need to be waiting for another 20 minutes. Um, and my solution for that is I take the train nowadays, but that's not, of course, <laughs> the solution. So those cru crucial moments are the moments where smart charging will, um, uh, will not be accepted from our EV drivers. And therefore, we need to ask our EV drivers 
what they want and what their preferences are. And to see what the options are for smart charging, we looked at our historical data of EV Net NL. One of my colleagues did this uh, analysis uh, just on one day, so it's not really an in-depth an analysis. But what he found out that if you look at this uh, profile, you can see the blue line, which is the normal charging profile, as everyone probably knows here in this room. Um, you can see that it's possible to entirely shift the peak to another moment without asking the EV drivers to change their behavior. The only problem is we need to know when they're leaving what the state of charge is of the car and how much uh, load they need. And at this moment there are a few flexibility services but unfortunately it's limited available. If we then look at what uh, the customer research within FlexPower, uh, we see that uh, the V-Driver as well is willing to give this flexibility. But one of the most important thing is they will only give flexibility if they are staying in control. So they have an option to switch off the flex, uh, the, the flex mechanism. And therefore, it's necessary for the accept acceptance of the service to be uh, to know what this EV driver wants. All these demonstration projects together um, have shown us uh, that we um, have a big potential for smart charging. But those de these demonstration projects, in which uh, most of these flex power uh, results are. Um, um, integrated primarily focus nowadays on the electric uh, electric market, on the energy market, and not on the capacity market. Um, although we see in research that a combined system would be the best solution, so both in, in, in corporate energy market and the local capacity market, um, there are not enough uh, projects yet to, uh, yet to have a good system. But as we saw before, we need to work to an integrated <coughs> system where we can uh, trade uh, flexibility. And we see nowadays that the energy market is already quite a difficult and complex market. This is what we did for just trading energy and, um, uh, uh, and getting to be able to trade energy within the, the market. This is not, not a model where the capacity is already incorporated. And that's something we need to make to put on top of this model. But I don't know if this is the best way or that we should look at what we actually want and our goal is to get sustainable energy in this car. So should we incorporate our lo local capacity market within the, the really complex market there already is or should we maybe look at our first goal again uh, to put renewable energy within a local market. Um, and therefore I would say we should look at the goal again and I hope you all want to look with me on this system design um, to actually uh, be able to um, uh, avoid this local problem uh, and uh, hopefully have the best solution without a lot of financial issues. Thank you. Oh. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> this was our final uh, statement, right? Okay. Yeah. I, I, I think well. Questions? I start here at the left. Yeah. Do you think it should be possible for the user acceptance that the user can? or remotely stop the smart charging process that you know, 20 minutes before you're going to your car you see, okay, I, uh, you know, I want to turn it off or you know, to influence, uh, that I can influence my personal charging session. The question is, should the user be in control? Yeah. I think the user should be in control, yeah. Uh, uh, there was a question there, then I go to you, yeah. So, um, um, we did the same analysis for the, the municipality of uh, Amsterdam, and if you go back to the previous slide, uh, yeah, what uh, my result was is that the second peak, so the peak after peak shade, it was higher than the previous peak at six o'clock. Um, so, in your vision, um, what would be um, the, the future of smart charging given the fact if you do peak shade, you get a new peak? It has more impact on the old thing. Yeah, of course, this is not the... Uh, uh, yeah, um, the question is if you... If you, if you shift the peak, you get a new peak. Yeah, and what do we do with it? Uh, which higher, yeah. Of course, this is not the ideal profile in which... Because we only created a new peak. I agree on that. But what you can do is you have a lot of capacity during the night, which is not shaved. So you wanted to... Uh, um, and the other appliances... So can I first? So you want to uh, 
she, she <laughs> you want to distribute it more equally than, than we did here. But it, it is possible. You can just lower it and, and, and have enough capacity during, because this is the night time where we have a lot of capacity on the grid. I think, yeah. I, I mean, it's fairly easily done, I think, if you price it. I mean, I always start at 9 in the evening because then my night current starts. My night power, so it's so easy for me in my Tesla. I just say, okay, start at night. Yeah, but the, the, the finding was that the new peak was almost one and a half times the old peak. Yeah, but so if you even higher, if so you make it more expensive, it will it will just equalize. In, in the end. And therefore, we need to have the dynamic profiles. Dynamic, yeah. Because we can't we can't do it without just with just shifting the peak. What we did in flex power, that's not a profile we want. We no. can prefer. We need to have a dynamic profile where everyone will cheek, uh, start charging at different moments. Smarter. So you mean security of the of the, the the safety of the whole system, not not about the hackers for the private person. Your question is about the safety for the whole grid. The safety for the whole system. Yeah. Do you have an opinion about safety? Um, that is one of our important research topics at ELAT. I'm not the expert in that, so I um, would uh, prefer to uh, lead you to my colleague who can say everything about it. Yeah, it's a relevant yeah. issue. Yeah. Maybe. Well, right, the last question, yes. Okay. I, I was intrigued by your map you showed on slide two. Yeah, me too. <laughs> that, that was my question. Yeah, that, that's it far from being red. Can you show it again, very fast? It is not red at all, right? It has done something wrong. Yeah. Yeah, this is only a, a map where you can, where we put in the 8 million cars and if I would say that this is already a really big problem for the local uh, grid uh, perspective. Because if this, if this would happen, we can't even, ha we don't have enough people, we don't have enough money and we don't have enough time to actually trans uh, uh, replace all the transformers and all the grid uh, connections. Yeah. And, and, and this is in 2050? This is actually, if, you, if I really would go in depth, but I, I Promise my colleague not to do it. <laughs> uh, it's just one of the scenarios, so it's not nothing. We don't know when this actually is happening, but it's just a map you can see where what happens if we put 800 million cars without all the other things we know is coming. Yeah. Okay. I, I uh, propose that we stop here. Yeah. Let's uh, thank Marike again.